Tis the season for fun, warm holiday drinks. And here to share a sweet recipe in our Sky Kitchen, Jordan Brotherton, clinical assistant professor with the hospitality management at the University of Illinois is back. So, how'd your turkey turn out? Turkey went really well. <laughs> Did it? Absolutely, yeah. Thursday was a big hit. That was the best turkey, I have to tell you, that I had ever had here at Sea Living. Thank ever. you very much. It was like the juiciest, moistest turkey ever. So now... And she saved me a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, sorry, you missed out, because that was, it was a really good <laughs> I know turkey. It. I, wanted to, I wanted to ask you before we go on, like, you are the coordinator for all of our U of I student chefs yes, that come in. Yes, uh, part of a small team, but um, the... Uh, the Bevier Cafe. Um, it's it's one of my two courses. Yeah. Um, yeah. Getting to know the students, sending them in. What do you do to get students who come in? Basic, like sometimes they have experience, but for the most part, you gear them from, you build them from the ground up. So mm -hmm. what do you do? How do you teach them about approaching a kitchen? So that's what's so interesting about about the University of Illinois is it's we're based in, in food science. So um, part of it is obviously the hands-on skills in a kitchen, how to, how to cook, uh, but we're also teaching them what's going on at the molecular level. You know, what's the food science behind this? Um, when you throw a steak on the grill, why does it sizzle? What makes it, you know, cook the way it does? So what is the oh. answer? Um, their whole... <laughs> I could be here for an hour trying to Sizzling explain that. proteins? Is that yes, exactly right. It's, it's all about the coagulation of proteins. It's well, we're not, we're not sizzling any steak today, and, but... And we have a new rule. You're not allowed to use the word coagulation oh, okay. yes. in the kitchen. Yeah. Just say. <laughs> Let's so, talk hot chocolate. Sure, yes, sure. This is a family recipe. It is a family recipe that um, originated, I believe, with my grandmother. Um, but it's been a part of our kind of the holiday season forever, as long as I can remember. Um, and it's something that I do now. Um, I pass it on to friends and family members, and it's just, it's great. So it's Born not your quick Swiss mess in the packet. <laughs> no, in fact, not. it's, that's a bad word in our house, to tell oh, you the truth. So, yeah. Is that, um, okay. It is they're, a they're, they're Nesquik. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. What do we need to get started? So um, we've got everything portioned out here, and essentially it's just four ingredients in equal proportions. Okay. Um, we've got some powdered milk, dry milk, and you just go ahead and dump all this into that Okay, bowl. and that looks kind of like that over there. Exactly. Um, so you're giving us some examples of, of what these would be. This is what I picked up to make here. it today, and this, okay. um, you can make it in any quantity, essentially, as long as these four ingredients are equal. Okay. Um, the next is actually um, a non-dairy instant coffee creamer. Oh. That's going to give it that creamy mouth feel. Okay, a little coffee mate. Absolutely. Powdered sugar. Oh, my. And then, um, obviously, we've got uh, chocolate mix. Um, you can use Nesquik. Um, that's what I grew up on, but I actually, that's um, some Ghirardelli. I prefer it because it's Ooh. finer grain and it coats really well when you mix it up. So, okay. Um, small point of contention in our household, I actually prefer <laughs> some cinnamon. Um, it, you don't taste the cinnamon so much as you smell it while you're drinking it, and it's kind of a nice aromatic. Oh, okay. nice. It's great. Uh, but you mix all that together. Um, I, I whisk is the easiest way i found to do it. Because it's all dry. It so is. This is. And the best part about it is when you add water and you reconstitute that milk, it, the, the best hot chocolate you're ever going to have is made with hot milk, not water. But because we're using dried milk or powdered milk in this recipe, you're going to get that milky flavor because there's milk in it. It's milk-based. Uh -huh. um, you're also going to get a creamy flavor from the or consistency from the coffee mate, um, sweet from the sugar, and chocolatey from the cocoa. So how much of that makes one cup of hot cocoa? Based on the container, I would recommend starting with a third of a cup and then adding to your, your per, or preferred taste. Oh. Um, but okay. it's, it's, you know, if you have a really big mug, Add, a, add it up to the third mark. And well, and I'm, okay. I'm showing this off, but in reality, this isn't. This is. It doesn't look any different. No, not at all. <laughs> not so, at all. And what I like about this is how you're going to package. Them. Absolutely, it makes fantastic gifts through the holidays, um, and it's it's extremely shelf stable. You could hold on to it for a few months, um, and use it whenever you'd like. There you go. It. And it make great Christmas gifts. Yeah. Too. Yeah. How definitely. easy is that? Jazz it up with a little peppermint on there, or a little. For sure. Yeah. Okay. And Jordan promises that this is as good as his grandmother. It is. It is. Yeah. I guarantee it. Maybe All even right. better. Best with hot that. chocolate ever. It's better good. with the cinnamon. Okay, we'll have the recipe on saleliving.tv and um, we'll have more with you coming up because we have to sample some of this. Sure.